registration desk. Have you finished with the, all your registrations so far? So, uh, for anyone that have uh, joined us before last time, we, I was on stage and presented some keynotes. Very welcome to uh, the Startup Weekend Lund, that is held together with some other Startup Weekend events. For instance, in Copenhagen, and if I have understood this right, this will be sent in real time to Copenhagen. So feel the pressure, Peter. Uh, so uh, we will come back to uh, what we will do tonight because you will not just sit there listening and uh, eating and drinking and so on. So you will, you will need to work for all the things you eat. Uh, <laughs> so but, uh, and we will come back to, to, to describe how we will set up your activities later on and the schedule for the weekend. But now I want to introduce Peter Sunde and Christopher and your surname? Christopher Persson, that is working for a company that is called not Flatter, but Flatter. And uh, Flatter is, has something to do with sharing, and I think Peter here has uh, had something to do with sharing also in the history. But uh, some, some of the things that sharing is bad, some of them think is, is a good thing. A lot of people think that you should pay for your sharing. And now I think you are back to share payments, okay? Welcome. Nothing else. 
we're also very good at taking uh, other people's things and making it our own. Um, we also uh, started a lot of side projects. One of these side projects was very famous, so it became very famous, and that's the Pirate Bay. So the reason we started the Pirate Bay was that a lot of these different file sharing networks on, on the internet, Napster and the Supernova at the time, which was the biggest, um, they were a bit scared of the pressure they got from the copyright industry. So the copyright industry said that uh, to all of the operators that you can't do this, you can't allow people to share files with each other, and we're going to sue you. And most of the people that ran all of these networks were 17 year old uh, year old kids. So they got scared when they got uh, a letter from the lawyers firm saying, you know, we're going to sue you, it's going to be 200 million dollars a day or something. So they just stopped running the networks. We decided to not stop. Um, and rather we decided to have an, a different approach. We didn't want to censor anything, we let anyone copy whatever they wanted. And we responded to all of these threats instead of, uh, instead of actually uh, just ignoring them or, or anything. Yeah. And talk a little bit about the Pirate Bay just to know why I'm here today. It's only because the Pirate Bay became very big. Uh, the technology that the Pirate Bay uses is called BitTorrent. BitTorrent uh, works the way that one computer can send a little bit of information about a file to lots of other computers and they can in turn start sending the same small piece of information to all of the computers that want to share. So essentially you can have one sender and a thousand recipients and they in turn become senders as well. So it's a very efficient technology. So Pirate Bay, back when we were still running a, a tracker system which is the central hub of this, we used to be before technology evolved, uh, had over 100,000 uh, computers that connected to our system at any second asking for other people that were sharing information. So they could get a request uh, or a response saying there's 1,000 other computers that actually have this information and these are the IP addresses that they actually have, which would turn into millions of connections between computers in every second all over the world. Um, Pirate Bay became so big that it's today about 60 to 65% of all the BitTorrent traffic in the world is actually shared using the Pirate Bay. And uh, just to make that something interesting, 80 to 82 percent of all the traffic on the internet is actually BitTorrent. So a little bit of math, Pirate Bay is almost half of all of the internet. And we're three guys, and one is drunk all the time, uh, another one takes drugs, and uh, one doesn't. So I'm not going to say that. Kind of what happened, like the technology evolved, and uh, the people that not really technical or really technical doesn't matter do anything they want on the internet, and you could actually change the way a lot of things happen in one industry. And as everybody else, we start out really small. This is the first computer we had. It's not this one. It's not that one. It's this one. Uh, we didn't even we couldn't even afford the shoe box the, the computer is in, so we actually got that as a present as well. Um, and this is what we had in Mexico for six years ago um, that we started with. And it might sound strange, but we started in Mexico because we had free internet. Um, but after a while we realized that having things in Mexico is bad because if you don't pay bribes to the electrical company, you won't have power. So we decided to actually move uh, to a nicer country, to Sweden. And um, we started growing quite rapidly because all of the other sites shut down and we were still there. And uh, when we got these threatening letters, we responded in a way that is more like university students would, instead of 16-year-old kids. So we uh, got letters, especially from companies like Apple and DreamWorks, and uh, responded quite humorously, saying, well, you have problems in the US with your copyright law and so on, but we live in Sweden. Sweden is not part of the United States yet. Um, it's actually on the other side of this big water thing uh, and our big problem is that we have polar bears roaming around